Photography is all about taking stunning pictures. But you have to practice a lot to get a good grasp of the light, shutter speed, and aperture commonly known as the exposure triangle. But what if you are just thinking of starting photography and you don't even own a camera? How can you learn and practice exposure in that situation? Well, all your worries have come to an end as we are going to show you the best simulators for practicing exposure. So let's see those simulators and start practicing now. First, we have the Play, a web-based simulator developed by Canon so that users get a comprehensive idea of exposure in photography. The main subject here is a toy airplane with a moving propeller. It comes with three modes, Shutter Priority, Aperture Priority, and Manual Mode. Shutter Priority lets you control only the shutter speed manually, while Aperture Priority allows for adjusting the aperture only. The Manual Mode features full manual control for all the settings of the exposure triangle. The aperture value ranges from 2.8 to 22, whereas the shutter speed can be adjusted from 1 second to 1 by 4,000th of a second. You can also play with the ISO ranging between 100 to 25,600. There is an exposure meter that also comments on your current setting whether it is a good exposure, underexposed, or overexposed. There is even a shutter button for clicking the picture. After the picture is taken, you will be able to see a detailed analysis of your performance along with some tips for better exposure. You can also compare between your shots as the simulator lets you save three of your photos. If you are new to photography and want to get a grasp of exposure and interested to buy a Canon camera in the future, the Canon Play will be the perfect simulator for you. Next, let's talk about a simple yet effective simulator. Exposure Simulator by Anderson Images that shows you real-time changes you make in the exposure triangle. Its three shooting modes are Shutter Priority, Aperture Priority, and Manual. The Shutter Priority lets you change the shutter speed and the ISO only, meanwhile the Aperture Priority allows for changing the aperture and the ISO. Besides, you can tweak all the settings in Manual mode. There is also an exposure meter on the top of the website, guiding you to take images of the right exposure. The simulator also comes with instructions about how to use it. One of the most fascinating features of this simulator is the real-time output. So whatever you do, whether you change the aperture or the ISO, you can see the change in real-time. And there is no shutter or click button to capture a photo. You just make the changes, see it instantly, and again tweak the settings if necessary. That's how you learn exposure with this simulator. In short, Exposure Simulator by Anderson is undoubtedly a wonderful yet simple web-based tool to learn exposure. Lastly, we are going to talk about Camera Sim, a real-time simulator with a neat interface and easy-to-understand camera options. Its free web version shows a smiling girl standing with a spinning paper fan on a kid's playground. You can adjust the amount of light in the environment to replicate daytime or nighttime shooting. Additionally, it has a distance slider that lets you place the subject near or far away from you. The next slider lets you decide on the focal length of the lens. These two sliders provide you with a real-life example of the relationship between the distance of the subject from the camera and the focal length of the lens. Apart from that, the simulation comes with four different modes with four different functionalities. The first mode is called the program mode, which sets the aperture and shutter speed on the automatic and lets you adjust the ISO only. Similarly, the aperture priority only allows for controlling the aperture and ISO, and shutter priority offers tweaking the shutter and ISO only. The fourth mode is the most exciting, manual mode. If you are really into learning photography, you should try the manual mode in which you can take maximum control of each setting. There is also an exposure meter that tells you whether you are overexposed or underexposed. Another fascinating feature is the tripod option. You can turn the tripod option on if you want to avoid shaky images or if you want to capture at a slower shutter speed. And once you are done setting all the features to get the right exposure, 
you can click the snap photo button and the picture is taken with a nice click sound. After that, the site shows you the final image with the comment if you have done it right or a recommendation to improve the image further. However, there is a flaw in this simulator. When you adjust the environment light, it only affects the background and not the girl. Other than that, everything works like a charm. So overall, CameraSim is a wonderful site for learning photography basics that come with an intuitive and easy to use interface. So that was all about the best photography simulator for you. You can stick to any one of them or you can also try all of them to enhance your learning experience. So which simulator did you like the most? Let us know in the comment section.